Okay, guys and gals, uh, this is part two of the writing panel, uh, world building, and this is, we'll focus on characters. I realized in the last video I really didn't go too in depth on setting, and we probably won't go too in depth into characters either until we really get to writing the story. Um, I just want to say a few things first. Um, first thing is, I hope that you're following along at home and maybe doing little exercises like this. Um, one good thing to do, and I'm not really one to say this because I don't do this myself, but, um, if you really are serious about writing, the best way to get better is to actually read, and read, read stuff you actually enjoy. You know, from genres you enjoy, like if you want to write a fantasy novel, then you should read a lot of fantasy stories, and you can slowly get better by doing that. Another way to get better is to, um, to actually write. And um, that can just be, you should write something every single day, and I don't do that, so I'm not one to talk. But every day you should just sit down, set aside some time, and then just maybe write stream of consciousness, or basically take, an, take a concept and write it out like that. Just a suggestion. Anyway, um, another thing is, um, I'm picking, I'm using random generators, but if you have a story idea in mind, then you can use that, because... Um, Basically, I want a challenge, so I'm basically doing everything random just to show that that this works. And um, so um, we're going to go to a um, character generator over here. A character generator, and this is um, Seventh Sanctum, I believe, is what it's called. Yep, Seventh Sanctum, Anthropomorphic Animal Generator. And since I'm going to write a furry story, I'm using this generator. And this is what popped up. A violent, tactless female anthropomorphic black furred bear from a good family. She has a slender build. Her wardrobe is flattering. Okay. A chastity, experienced female anthropomorphic hedgehog. She has a voluptuous build. Her ward wardrobe is unusual. Socially experienced female stingray, anthropomorphic stingray. Illogically stupid, world weary male anthropomorphic lark. Uh, and they've got a whole bunch of these here. A mud skipper. Uh, hare, vulture, uh, lizard, and we could use these, but um, we're going to get our own, and I just wanted to point out here that um, they actually have a more, more um, see, any profession, any time period, or general, fantasy, modern, see, so it can basically fit any story you're writing, science fiction, and I'm not sure exactly what genre of story we want to write yet. So we're just going to go general, but I just wanted to point out that you can even pick out um, females, males, stuff like that. But And if you want to do mythicals, mythicals would be unicorns and dragons and stuff like that. Anyways, we're going to go with general, just because we'll just see what pops up. And uh, we'll just generate ten results here and pick two of these, just to start out. And... Again, I, I just did that because I wanted to show on, oh, a driven vocal female frog, anthropomorphic frog, OC cat. Ooh, an odd wardrobe. That might be fun. Uh, let's see. There's a mole, a hedgehog. They really like doing the hedgehog. I do like hedgehogs. They're pretty cool. Another mole, hedgehog. Wow. Greyhound. Ooh, that might be fun. Uh... Lizard, uh, a hamster, and Egyptian Mao. Wow, so we have cats and dogs. Uh, wow, this is going to be difficult. I mean, just because of the sheer amount of um, choices here. But again, this is Seventh Sanctum Generator. Um, and if you are writing a story of this nature, then this is really a way to go. There's lots of sites, though. I saw lots of sites. This is just seemed more up my alley. Anyways, uh, with this, um, we need to decide mm. characters. Well, we, we'll need at least two, because it's kind of boring with just one, so I'll write down characters here. And uh, we'll have to see what which of these I can work with. I don't know much about frogs. I'm not sure what an oaky cat is. I might have to look that one up. Uh, moles I'm not too familiar with. Hedgehogs are nice, but, uh, uh, 
Hedgehog, Greyhound. That might be fun. The, right here, the sarcastic, friendly, and educated female anthropomorphic Greyhound. A dignified wardrobe. Now, I also want to say, in terms of wardrobe, is um, a story can still be family friendly if the characters are naked. I'm just saying, as long as you don't mention, you know, anything below the waist, anything above the waist, you know, as long as you still keep it clean. Um, uh, a good example of this would be Donald Duck, Heckle and Jekyll, um, different anthropomorphic characters that don't really wear clothes, but are still family friendly because they don't show anything. Um, that, that would still be family friendly, I believe. Now, we have here this, uh, um, a lizard? Hmm. A lizard might be fun. I do like lizards. Now, purple scaled lizard, that might be good. And my, f my tablet is telling me that, I don't know, it just doesn't charge right. Anyways. Um, wait, is that, um, male, yeah, we will... We want one of each. So we want a male and a female, I guess. This is still going to be family friendly, of course. And um, let's see, the greyhound and the lizard, I guess, just because I usually like um, difference like that, like um, cats and dogs, antelopes and wolves, that kind of stuff. Anyways, you know so, where there's a difference, and so there's there's basically conflict there just by the different species. Um, especially if they're natural predators and they still get along or they form a friendship. It's just, um, it makes for, in my opinion, makes for a better story. But again, it can be about anything. Um, let's see, wise, experienced, okay, wait, um, sarcastic, friendly, sarcastic, friendly, uneducated, female, anthropomorphic, Greyhound, uh, female, uneducated, that could be fun, educated, female, greyhound, I do like greyhounds, they are such dignified dogs, um, dignified wardrobe, I do, I do like writing about foxes too, so anyways, and greyhounds and foxes are pretty close, I guess. Uh, conformist, or anthropomorphic, hamster, no, um, where's it? Oh, here it is. A wise, experienced male, anthropomorphic, purple scaled lizard, elaborate wardrobe. Okay. I will write this down real quick and keep talking. Um, next we will talk about, um, basically going more in depth into building, building scenery. Um, it's basically a lot like making a movie. Writing a story is a lot like making a movie in that um, you plan out the scenes, you want to make sure that everything fits, all the set pieces fit. Um, we'll probably try and elaborate on the scenery. Um, will the train be, you know, simple and drab, or will it be colorful and elaborate? Um, will it be day, will it be night? I think that it says evening here, so that's figured out. And there's also a storm going on, so that should be fun. You've got a sense of tension there with the storm. Well, high winds, and I consider that to be a storm. Anyways, we still have about a minute, and I'm just going to quickly... Uh, wise, experienced, male, purple-scaled lizard. Okay, so it's like a dragon. Wise, experienced, male, purple lizard. Oh, it's Barney. Oh, great. Oh, I'm <laughs> kidding. But anyways, yeah, even dinosaurs would be kind of fun to write about. I especially like um, uh, Parasaurolophus. I have written several stories about Parasaurolophus, but I never really published my stories. And they just basically rot on my hard drive, basically. Until my hard drive dies and I lose them for good. <laughs> but anyways, um, this is um, going to be an ongoing series. So if you like this, then um, like, subscribe, share, comment. Um, and follow along at home. I mean, I encourage people to, um, you don't necessarily have to share your stories with me, but, um, but just get to writing. And, um, the best way to become a, a better writer is to actually write and act and to actually read. And so in closing, I appreciate everybody watching this and I hope that you all have a great day. Thanks for watching.